Hello, welcome back to my Let's Play Thumbcraft 2015 series. So I have been working on the basement. I have redone the sorting system just a little bit. I put the barrels over there on the wall and made a few more. I didn't like the way the barrels looked over here in front of the chest. It kind of blocked things off a little bit, so I put them over here instead. All right. The next thing I want to focus on is having the output of my machines go right into the sorting system so the machines don't get clogged up anymore. And before I do that, I also want to build a machine from Mine Factory Reloaded, which will help us simplify the outputs of all of our stuff. So a lot of mods, like tech mods, add different minerals, silver, copper, tin, lead, things like that. But that means every mod adds their own kind. So we've got industrial craft metals, thermal expansion metals, rail craft metals, and so on and so on. I'd like them all to be the same type. I told you about a machine we can use to do that for us easily. It's called the Unifier from Mine Factory Reloaded. So this is a unifier. The recipe isn't too bad. It's a little bit involved, but not too bad. You need a machine frame, a maltimeter, some plastic sheets, redstone comparators, silver gear, and a book. Book, vanilla Minecraft, comparator, vanilla Minecraft. So those are pretty simple. Redstone torches, quartz, and stone. Silver gears, again, just silver surrounding iron. The book, leather, and some pages. We made play machine frames already. The multimeter requires an electrum gear, which is electrum around iron, and the redstone conductance coil, which is electrum between two pieces of redstone like that, and then copper and lead. Lastly, the plastic sheets you get by smelting rubber. You get rubber by either cooking up raw rubber or you extract it from IC2 rubber trees. So you get raw rubber by cutting down mine factory reloaded rubber trees. And that's what I've done to get my rubber. Smelt that to get rubber bars. Smelt the rubber bars or rubber from IC2 to get raw plastic, which you combine into plastic sheets. So that's the unifier. And the unifier is going to allow us to unify the outputs of our stuff. So if there's two kinds of copper, there will be just one kind of copper. So let me start with that. So I have railcraft copper, but if I cook up pulverized copper in this furnace, I'm going to get thermal expansion copper. And I don't want multiple kinds of copper in my system. If I combine my copper into a block, I get railcraft blocks. So taking the railcraft block back into ingot form ends up with railcraft copper, which is why most of my stuff is in railcraft form right now. But let's simplify it. We put ingots in the top. I get IC2 copper out the bottom. And it will unify everything. It just takes the first result of the ore dictionary, and that's what you get out of it. Now, I think these preferences help sort out some things, but I'm not sure how they work, unfortunately. So I'm going to ignore those for now. All right. So I would like the output of these machines to go right to the unifier and the unifier to come out the back and go into our sorting system. So let me get a way back there so I can walk around. All right, I have made some item ducts from thermal expansion, or rather thermal dynamics, which I'm gonna to use to transport items from our machines. They're pretty simple, tin surrounding lead. Now these are the opaque version because I don't have the machine still that will do the clear non-opaque versions. But we'll put this pipes, these pipes right over here and into the unifier. And then the back will go out here right into this chest. And to pull items out of an MFR machine, we're going to need a servo. Servo in there. Ignored, it's always active. There we go. So, now it should work. So, let's test it out and see how it goes. So, I should be able to grind something up, like, uh, let's see here. 
if I grind up lead, I should get pulverized lead from thermal expansion. And then I'm going to end up with lead dust from IC2 because that's what we're going to get from our unifier. I don't know if we'll see it go in here, but we should see it in the system eventually. So let's see here. It should end up in the IC2 chest, which is right here. So we'll give that a second and see if it ends up over here. Not seeing it yet. Is it possible there's IC2 dust in here? I see pulverized lead. It might take a second to actually end up here. Ah, there we go. Lead dust ended up in this chest. So I'm not quite sure why lead dust ended up here because there wasn't any lead dust in this chest. Perhaps there's another IC2 pulverized stuff. Yeah, there is. Copper dust is 4284 and lead dust also 4284. So same item number. That's why it got sorted into this chest. But there you go. It is lead dust, not pulverized lead that we got from the pulverizer. So the unifier is working. So that's good. All of our stuff is going to be unified from now on. Now, I do want to work on hiding all of these pipes. I've got the flux ducts in the back, and they're being hidden by the machine somewhat, but these walls, I need something to hide those with. Pipes, I want covers for that. All on this wall is here, and you can see the bottom of this too, and even this. So I want to work on fixing that. And what I use to fix that depends on what we're going to make the floor out of. So right now it's kind of a hodgepodge material, so I'm not quite ready to get my final material. But we can go ahead and start working on how we'll hide stuff. So first of all, I really liked the Forge Multiparts API, or not the API, but the Forge Multipart blocks that they introduced with 1.6. Unfortunately, this did not become the standard I was hoping for. It seems like several mods are breaking off and doing their own covers because I guess the Forge mod is maybe too complicated or too involved or I don't know why, but they don't all use Forge and that means we have to go with different methods for hiding pipes depending on what mod we're talking about. So, for extra utilities, we can use Forge multiparts. So, for these kinds of pipes, we'll use forge micro blocks to hide those. So the first step in getting that is to make a saw. And there are lots of materials we can make saws out of. I'm going to make it out of the Project Red materials because I've got plenty of that and honestly I don't know what I'm going to do with those Project Red materials. So let's see here. I've got Peridot, Ruby. I've got the most Ruby so I'm going to use that. So we need a couple pieces of Ruby and some sticks and some stone tool rods from Forge, which you get with two pieces of stone. So let's see here. Get me some stone and some sticks and some ruby, and that should get me a ruby saw. Oh, I didn't make the... Uh... There we go. That should get me a saw. Perfect. I'm pretty sure this is not scannable. Very few Project Red stuff is, but let's test it out. I'm wrong. All right, good. So for now, I think we'll just use cobblestone. So to hide these, we're going to use hollow cobblestone covers and then just cobblestone covers for these edges. Now, if you need the pipe to connect to the machine, you need a hollow cobblestone cover or a hollow cover so the pipe can fit through. If you are just trying to hide the floor, you can use the regular covers. To get the regular covers, put a piece of material and the saw on top. That gets you slabs, then panels, then covers. And we're going to need a couple of those, so I'll put one more piece over here.
All right. Put them in a pattern like that, like a furnace pattern, and we'll get hollow cobblestone covers. And I might need more than eight. We'll find out in a second. Let me put down the four a little bit so I can have access to these. In fact, I'm almost sure we're going to need more than eight. So I may as well go ahead and make some more right now just to show you that. One more piece of the regular covers. I shouldn't need more than eight of those. I don't have that much four to cover. All right. So they're a little bit hard to place sometimes, so you have to get back a little bit, and it makes it easier anyway to see what you're doing. So you can see they can fit in different places. You can fit over like this, or there we go, like that. There, that's what I want. So, right click, it places it like this. The next one will be easier to place, I can put it on the edge of this instead. Yep, like that. It's a little bit hard to tell quite where you should place it. Just have to kind of angle the mouse a little bit and see how the shadow pattern changes. Is that right? Yep, okay. Couldn't tell sometimes. Now for this, I seen a 4 here. Don't need a pipe to connect, so let's do that. Come on. And it may be easy to break some of the things that are on top just occasionally to place things easier. There we go. Finally. And we can't put anything over here. This is the entire floor. We'll see it just slightly, but uh, unfortunately that's about as good as we can do with that. So let's come back over here and hide the rest of the floor. That looks pretty good. One there, and then I'll break the floor here. And a hollow cover. Perfect, there we go. So now we will not be able to see these pipes in here. It will be all nice and flush, and will appear to be just another floor piece but it actually won't be. So now, obviously, it's going to look a little bit bad because this is cobblestone. My floor's all messed up, but you get the idea. It's how you could hide stuff and, you know, not have to see your pipes. Now, unfortunately, they don't work with thermal dynamic stuff. You can see that's not in the same block. It's in this block. So that won't work for covers like that. To do that, we need the thermal dynamic specific structural ducts which, uh, unfortunately, I, I, I don't like that as well, but uh, it is what it is. So let me go get the materials we need to build one of those. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the items we need to make the covers, and one nice thing about the structural duct covers from Thermal Dynamics is that I can cover a pipe in the same way I cover up anything else. I don't need a specific kind of cover. This pipe that connects here still connects through the cover. So to make a cover you need a structural duct and that's just iron ingots, sorry iron nuggets next to lead. You get six of those and for each one of those you can buy with a block you get six covers. It's a very cheap recipe. I don't think you can transform the covers back into the pipes but that's just what I've seen so far. So all right, I'm gonna make one more set of these covers and then you'll see we can close up pretty easily as well. So let's do, go ahead and do that. All right. 
perfect. We now can't tell where the 4 is and where the wall is. So, nice. And the 4 is all nice and flush. If only the 4 were all the same, you know, material. So, that's what I want to get started on now, working on a wand of equal trade and deciding what material I want my basement to actually be out of rather than this. Oh, I can put them up there too, I, could, I guess. I'm not going to for now. I don't have enough. I don't want to make any more cobblestone covers because I'm not going to make the basement out of cobblestone. But um, we'll figure that out and start working on the wand of equal trade. To do that, I need some balanced shards, which I don't have right now. So I'm working on getting some of that, and I should have that pretty soon. And I decided not to put the rolling machine back here in the lineup because... I probably will not use the rolling machine for anything else. So, all right. I'll go see how much time we have. Be back in a flash. Okay, so I need to go do some more mining to get the material I need to work on the Wand of Equal Trade. I need some more shards. So before I do that, I want to upgrade my pickaxe a little bit. So I want to add a fortune or looting enchant to my, to my pickaxe. To do that, open our Materials in You Volume 2 book and go down to the end, and I believe it's lapis you can use. Let's see here. Yes, luck is lapis, and you can get it up to fortune three, but it requires quite a bit of lapis to do that. I don't have that much, but we'll get some on it initially, and then we'll get more on it later on. So, onto the tool forge, put my pickaxe in here. I can put the lapis blocks in here, and the lapis in here. I need 450 pieces of lapis total to get enough to fully max out my pick as a fortune 3 pick. So we'll just go with 100, which is what I have right now, and that should get me to, I hope, fortune 1 at least. I have a bit more lapis, but not much more than that, so... Yeah, I do have fortune 1 now, so that's a good start. We'll use that. Hopefully I'll get some more lapis where I'm going. I'd like to make a better sword, too, so I'm going to go to the nether and try to find some ardite and cobalt, which we can combine to create manulin, which is a special tinker's construct alloy, which will be good to make a sword out of. So I'm going to go off and do that, and I'll come back and show you that. All right, I'm back from my trip to the nether, and I was able to find some cobalt and ardite ore. So, in the Mighty Smelting book from Tinker's Construct, you can see that manulin, and I have no idea if I'm saying that right or not, is made from cobalt and ardite ore. So, I've gone ahead and hooked some of that up into the smeltery. That gets you four ingots of molten manulin. So, I've got a sword blade cat. So I want to make a sword. That should take up one ingot of my manulin. I'm going to use a paper wide guard just like I did for the binding for the tool. And I'm going to use the iron tool rod I had laying around. All right, so let's see here. Wide guard, there we go, paper wide guard. Already got my tool rod. So we'll go into the basement, back to my tool forge, and build my new sword. So it's a broad sword, iron tool rod, paper wide guard, Manual and sword blade. There we go. So, why did I want a manual and broadsword? Well, if you go to your Materials in You Volume 2 book, you will see that the best material to make a sword from is manual. It's got a base attack rate of two hearts, and that's the highest of anything that you're going to find. And we can actually make it better. Let's see how that differs from the other sword. Yeah, so three hearts for this, four hearts for this. So the sword is already better. And it's also stronger. 1872 durability versus 180. That's hugely different. More importantly, we're going to give it self-repair. I've got a ball of moss here. And we're going to add moss to that to give it auto-repair. <clears throat> now, there are a couple other traits I want to add. Since I found some useful stuff in the nether. I found a necrotic bone. And looking into Materials in You Volume 2, 
you can see that there's a lifesteal effect. What do they call it? Necrotic. So basically, it's going to heal me every time a monster is attacked. And it heals me one heart per bone. So I'm going to add a bone to that and get the necrotic trait. And you get these lifesteal, or you get these necrotic bones from wither skeletons. The last thing I want to add is knockback. And you can get knockback on a Tinker's Construct tool by adding pistons. Let's see here. Where is that? Okay, yeah. Extra knockback to the tool. And I think we need 10 pistons to get the full knockback effect. So put the sword in here. Yeah, knock back one of ten. Alright, so we now have knock back the full level, and we've got life steal and auto repair, and it's a much more durable sword. So the last thing that we could do to make the sword better would be to add sharpness to it. That would make it even better than it is. So sharpness is achieved from nether quartz. Let's see here. Where is that in here? Okay, nether quartz. So yeah, we can add quartz to the tool. makes it sharper. So it'll increase the attack damage. So I got a ton of nether quartz in here. So let's see how this will work out. I'm not sure how much I need. I think it's 72. But I can't remember right off. Let's see. I've never scanned a block of their course. Let me scan that real quick. Yeah, it's 72. So, yeah. So I now have 4.5 hearts of damage. Let's see here. 16 times 5 is 80, which means I should have enough to fully max out this tool. Yeah. 67, 68, 70, 72. Perfect. So our attack is now 6 hearts. And let's see, I don't think we have any more modifiers now. Let's see, modifiers remaining. Yeah, no modifiers remaining. We've got knockback, auto repair, necrotic, and it's as sharp as it can be. So this is a very nice sword we built now. It's sh the only other thing I'd want to add to this sword would be looting. But I'm out of modifiers. However, we can add extra modifiers to the tool. I don't have any lapis, which we need to get looting. So I'll need to get that before we can talk about that. But if you want to add more modifiers to your tool, there are ways to do that. So let's see here. It's at the very end, I think. Oh, here we go. So a diamond and a block of gold will give us one additional modifier slot. So I'll probably take advantage of that in the future. All right. That's a pretty good wrapping up point for this episode. I'm going to go mining again, try to find some more stuff to help us get to work on that wand of equal trade, and I will see you next time.